You know, I think everybody is very, very different. We have these great, big, long laundry list of triggers. And when you look at the list, it's daunting. You know, it could be very, very overwhelming. But what I tell people is that not everybody has every trigger. And in fact, most people have just a few triggers. So it's just a matter of knowing your body, keeping food diaries, and just seeing how you react. Welcome to the Migraine Again podcast, helping you eat, breathe, survive, thrive, and engage better despite migraine. If you struggle with migraine often, join us for today's insightful conversation. Now here's your host, founder and managing editor of MigraineAgain.com and co-host of the Migraine World Summit, Paula Dumas. Hi, and welcome to the podcast. So what do you think? Can what you eat and drink really affect your health? Well, that's kind of obvious. But what about your migraine health? Today's guest says absolutely, and she should know. She's one of the top nutritionists and the author of a book on food cures. And we'll be back to meet her right after this. Our advertiser for today's podcast is SpeakYourMigraine.com. Developed by Amgen and Novartis, SpeakYourMigraine.com gives people with migraine a voice, combining facts and shared experiences to break stigmas and paint a clearer picture of migraine. You're listening to the Migraine Again podcast. For show notes and resources from this episode, check out our podcast page on MigraineAgain.com. And now, once again, here's your host, Paula Dumas. Welcome back, and we're talking about how what you eat affects your migraine health. You may know our guest today, Joy Bauer, as the nutrition expert on NBC's Today Show. She's a contributing editor to Women's Day magazine and a registered dietitian, a wellness educator, a wife, and a mother. Joy's a New York Times bestselling author of seven books, including Joy Bauer's Food Cures. And you may have seen some of her migraine safe recipes on our website. She is one of the few nutritionists and registered dietitians that we've discovered who's educating us on how food can be medicine for people with migraine. And Joy, thanks so much for being here. Uh, well, it's a pleasure to be here, and you just do such a fabulous job on your website. Oh, thank you. You know, one of the key topics that we address on Migraine Again is how to eat, and that's why we invited you here to talk to us today. And as you say, you know, life is hard and eating should be easy, and you know, we agree. On our Eat channel on Migraine Again, we talk about, you know, what to eat and what to drink and what to avoid to nourish your migraine brain and body. We're trying to help people prevent migraine attacks even before they begin. And you know, most people with migraine are told a lot about food triggers, but not about the foods that can help prevent attacks. So can you help explain to us what nutritionists mean by food is medicine and food cures? Sure. So, you know, food is so much more than fuel. And, you know, a lot of people obviously use food for comfort and love and celebration and social outings. But you know, by, by choosing the right foods in the right amounts, you really can help to treat or prevent, manage, sometimes in some instances, even reverse debilitating issues like migraine attacks. Now, food is never going to be like the cure-all, but there are compounds in food, antioxidants and anti-inflammatories and vitamins and minerals that really do have potent effects, and you can use them as medicine. You know, I often joke and say that food can be nature's medicine, but um, it really can, and when it comes to migraine attacks, there are specific things that you can eat and supplements that you can take that may not necessarily completely take them away or cure them, but they can help to reduce the frequency and the duration and the intensity and, you know, in turn, greatly enhance the quality of your life. And I have personally lived with migraines because my husband has suffered from migraines and my daughter, my daughter actually started with migraines when she was about 14 years old. Now she's 21. And, um, they, they are managed, you know, they're in control and she's actually not taking medicine, but she, she's very careful about her diet and she's reaped the benefits. That's so inspiring that your daughter is doing so well just through the power of food. We really need to understand which are the nutrients in food that we need as people with migraine and, and where do we find them? Um, I would say first that omega-3 fats are very, very interesting, as are monounsaturated fats like olive oil. 
these fats, so omega-3s have anti-inflammatory properties, and, and that's the key thing within them. And, and the same thing goes with um, olive oil as well, and specifically extra virgin olive oil, because it's going to be more potent in antioxidants. So when it comes to omega-3s, I would say um, your best friend is wild salmon and sardines. The nice part is, is that they're relatively easy to get. Even with wild salmon, you can buy it in the can, and you could mash it up just like you would tuna salad, but you know that you're making something that could greatly help to manage or reduce the frequency and duration of your migraine attacks. Um, Other things that have omega-3s and they're super easy to work with are chia seeds. Oh, I love chia seeds and, and olive oil. I keep them on my counter and I throw them into everything I can. And the nice part about chia seeds is that, um, they are heat resistant, so you could put them in healthy muffins, you could put them into pancake batter, you can put, you know, maybe a tablespoon, if you want to start out with just a teaspoon, into things like a smoothie oh, yeah. or even your oatmeal. And they don't have a taste, but you know that when they're entering your body, that they could be helping you in a productive way. So right. I love chia seeds, I love wild salmon, I love sardines, I love extra oil, extra virgin olive oil. So those are the omega-3s and the monounsaturated fats. Um, For me, salmon is the new chicken. So what else should we be looking for? Another group, um, a grouping of food or a category is riboflavin. And riboflavin is a B vitamin, and it's involved with energy production at the cellular level. And we do have some research suggesting that people who have migraine um, attacks can benefit from either taking a supplement with riboflavin or by eating foods that are rich in riboflavin. There are not that many foods um, with riboflavin, but you can find it, and again, it's B2. You can find it in milk. You can find it in eggs, mushrooms, asparagus, kale, and broccoli. And I love the last three because they're so good for you. Asparagus, kale, and broccoli. And one thing that I love to make is uh, kale chips. So we're going to double dip here because I take kale and I rip it into two inch pieces and I spread it out on a baking sheet and then I mist it with extra virgin olive oil, pop it in the oven on 400 for about 10 minutes and it crisps up and it's absolutely delicious. So it's a Hmm. perfect alternative to a greasy potato chip because you sort of satisfy that craving, but you're getting two hits of migraine protecting foods. You're getting the extra virgin Mm -hmm. olive oil and you're also getting um, the uh, compounds, the B2 in the kale as well. So that's the second grouping. The third, I would say, is magnesium. And um, I'm sure that a lot of people have heard about the the positive effects of magnesium because a lot of physicians even um, will put patients on 400 milligrams per day. Mm -hmm. The, the biggest connection that we have with magnesium is really with women who are suffering from menstrual migraines. And that's a lot of us. And in that case, again, like the supplements could have a beneficial effect, but there are also a lot of great foods that you could be eating. Seeds, so pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, even sesame seeds, spinach, Swiss chard, amaranth, quinoa is loaded with magnesium and quinoa is one of the easiest things to cook up because it cooks up just like rice. And the other cool thing about quinoa is it has a lot more protein than rice. So it's, um, it's a healthier side starch or because it has protein, it's also a great vegetarian entree as well. So there's a lot of cool things that you could do with quinoa. You're right. There are, you know, I'm trying to go to a plant-based diet and eat a couple of meat-free entrees a week. So yeah, I love quinoa. And wheat germ is another cool thing to know about. Wheat germ is loaded with magnesium and, um, you know, you could just buy it in a bottle. And just like we talked about with the flax seeds, you could sprinkle wheat germ onto oatmeal, you could put it into muffin or pancake batter, you could even work wheat germ like I do into, you know, uh, meatballs or into a turkey meatloaf, you could put it into the breading if you're making a chicken cutlet, so it's very, very versatile. So those are three things I would tell people to, um, you know, be on the lookout for. One would be the omega-3s and the olive oil. The second would be the riboflavin, which is B2. And the third would be magnesium. That was a mouthful. (laughs) Yeah, but good, good. And you gave us some tasty recipes and simple ideas on how we can work them into our diet, which is super helpful. 
But as we know, uh, food is only half of our diet, and what we drink is equally important. I'm Paula Dumas here with nutritionist Joy Bauer, and when we come back, we're going to talk more about the liquid half of your diet. Just a quick thanks to our advertisers, Amgen and Novartis, the creators of SpeakYourMigraine.com. Go to SpeakYourMigraine.com on your computer, tablet, or smartphone to take the Migraine Impact Assessment Test so you can understand how much of an impact migraine has on your life. Hey, we'd like to hear about your life with migraine and offer some help and encouragement if we can. If you've got a question about migraine, we'll do our best to answer it and might even include it on one of our upcoming podcasts. If you'd like to submit a question, just go to our website, migraineagain.com slash question. And we're back. I'm Paula Dumas with Migraine Again, and we're here with Joy Bauer, author of Joy Bauer's Food Cures. If you'd like to learn more about migraine and nutrition, you can check out her website at joybauer.com. That's J-O-Y-B-A-U-E-R.com. Or check out the eat section of migraineagain.com where you'll find a lot on food, nutrition, and a whole lot more about living and thriving with migraine. So we've talked a lot about what we eat, but let's talk for a few minutes about what we drink. What's going to help us and what's going to hurt us? You know, when it comes to beverages, first of all, hydration is so incredibly important because anybody who suffers with migraine attacks or from migraine attacks knows that when you are dehydrated, you are in trouble. Really, your best friend needs to be water. And whether it's carbonated or flat, um, the nice part about water is it doesn't have any added sugar, so it's not going to throw your blood sugars into a tailspin. Um, and it doesn't have any of the migraine triggers. The, if you're bored with plain old flat water, I tell people to pick up the naturally flavored seltzers. What's nice about the naturally flavored seltzers, again, is you get the, you know, the interesting fizz, so it gives you a little bit of a soda-like feel, and it's, it's flavored with just a fruit essence. So there's nothing that you need to be nervous about. There's no artificial sweeteners. There's no zero-calorie sugar substitutes, um, and there's certainly no added sugar as well. So really, I would just stick with water. I just tend to mix it up a little bit so that it doesn't get boring. But two types of drinks create an extra special problem for people with migraine, those with caffeine and those with alcohol. Can you address those? Sure. The problem with coffee and tea and alcohol is that it's really hit or miss. It's very case by case. Some people actually get relief from a cup of coffee and other people get rebound headaches from it. So, you know, this is sort of a case of you have to know your own symptoms. You have to do a little bit of trial and error. I would never tell anybody to experiment if, you know, you're out and about or you have an important meeting coming up. But, um, you know, just to be very careful and learn about your own body and, and what your tolerance is and what you're capable of. And the other thing with alcohol is because alcohol is dehydrating and it also lowers your blood sugars, a lot of people the morning after drinking will develop really, um, you know, bad symptoms, bad migraine attacks. So these are just things to be aware of. You know, I think everybody is very, very different. We have these great, big, long laundry list of triggers. And when you look at the list, it, it's daunting. You know, it could be very, very overwhelming. But what I tell people is that not everybody has every trigger. And in fact, most people have just a few triggers. Some people, you know, for some people, it's red wine. And for some people, it's chocolate or dairy or soy um, or cheese. But, but again, most people will not have every single trigger. So it's just a matter of knowing your body, keeping food diaries, and just seeing how you react. Because when you are careful with what you put in your mouth, you can dramatically reduce your symptoms. You're right, you can. I really regret waiting so long to start doing a diary, and it makes a huge difference to reveal things to you. So skipping meals is another common migraine trigger. What do you recommend for healthy snacks to keep with you when you're just too busy to eat a full meal? 
So, so this is um, a great point that you bring up. The reason that skipping meals is a big migraine trigger is because if your blood sugar level dips, you're going to get yourself into trouble. So you have to pack emergency snacks at all times because the name of the game is steadying those blood sugars and, and keeping them steadied and not letting them drop or spike, by the way. So I would say things like rice cakes or even, you know, dry whole grain cereal, sunflower seeds are terrific. Um, even things like small baggies of baby carrots, green apples are good. Some people... Um, respond negatively to red apples because of the skin. So that's why I'm, I'm specifically saying green apples. And a lot of people are totally fine with nuts. And um, for anyone that falls into that category, nuts are wonderful because they're totable and they're filled with healthy fats and protein and fiber. So whether it's almonds or walnuts, and walnuts, by the way, have those omega-3s. Um, it could even be, you know, cashews and peanuts. It all just depends, again, if you personally are okay with nuts. But a lot of ideas, and um, I think the important takeaway here is to make sure that you have an emergency snack stash in your purse, in your, in your desk drawer, wherever you're traveling, just to make sure that those blood sugar levels don't dip. Right. And when I go out, I never leave home without having a protein bar in my bag. And speaking of going out, eating out is something that presents really big challenges for people with migraine. So when we come back right after the break, we're going to talk with our guest, nutritionist Joy Bauer, about the challenges of eating out. A quick thanks to our advertisers, Amgen and Novartis, who have developed the SpeakYourMigraine.com website where you can read stories, gather tools and resources to help change the migraine conversation. It's time to turn private pain into collective change at speakyourmigraine.com. This is the Migraine Again podcast, encouraging and empowering you in your battle against migraine because you deserve to feel better. You can hear this conversation again or share it with someone who might like to hear it by going to MigraineAgain.com. And now, once again, here's Paula. Okay, and we're back with Joy Bauer, nutritionist and author of Joy Bauer's Food Cures, talking about dining out with migraine. People with migraine are a little nervous about eating out. You know, there can be hidden ingredients and food additives and MSG. Do you have any tips to make it easier for people? Yeah, eating out can be very tricky. I would say three words. Keep it simple. The simpler, the better when it comes to restaurant dining. So that means grilled chicken or fish, and you definitely want to request no MSG or vinegar if that's problematic for you. Um, when it comes to side vegetables, you want to say steamed or sautéed in olive oil. And, and you know, make sure the waiter knows that it's an allergy. So it may, make it make it very well known that this is a medical condition and you're not just being fussy. So they take this back to the chef and they take it very seriously. Um, you could also do a pasta with broccoli and grilled chicken tossed in any kind of an olive oil-like based sauce. And when it comes to dessert, because, hey, look, we all have to have dessert, right? We do. <laughs> I would say anything that's non-chocolate, like strawberries with whipped cream. You could even do a rice pudding. And then you could stick with um, herbal tea. I think, you know, that, that's a safe default when you're dining out. And again, if you know your personal trigger foods, it's going to be a lot easier to dine out and you're going to have a lot more wiggle room. But just to play it safe, the things that I just tossed out there um, should be sort of um, ingrained in your memory so that, you know, wherever you go, you have something to order. Joy, you've given us so much really practical and tasty advice. And I think this is going to be pretty simple for our community to follow. So, you know, life is hard enough, right? Um, you've simplified the process of trying to help us eat well with migraine. And I just think that people with migraine deserve to feel better. Uh, so we're excited about what you shared today. Anything else you'd like to add? Uh, no, you know, I'm just wishing everybody a pain-free, delicious life. Um, and I just want to thank you for having me on. Love your stuff, Paul. It's great. And I'd love to come back. Well, we'd love for you to join us again, Joy. And if you'd like to see more of Joy's migraine recipes and articles, you can check out joybauer.com or her book, Joy Bauer's Food Cures. And we'll provide a link to that under the show resources on our website. 
I'm Paula Dumas wishing you all a pain-free day. Take care. Thank you so much for spending part of your day with us. We hope that you feel encouraged and empowered in your battle against migraine because you deserve better. If you want to suffer less and live more despite migraine, be sure to check out all the great resources on MigraineAgain.com. Follow us on your favorite social network and subscribe to our free newsletter and this podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, tell a friend about it. And be sure and join us again next time on the Migraine Again podcast. You'll be glad you did.